something solo today, so all are welcome. What's up, D? What's going on with you? What's going on, man? Everybody talking about this KD situation. Michael Rappaport. I got a different take on it, man. Because... Hey, buddy. Yo, Rich, came up, son. What's up? Came up, Rich. What up? Come on, man. Chill, chill. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't need the ball, this, son. My, my, my hairline's intact, man. Don't, 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 try, don't try to disrespect me, man. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, son. What's good, bro, bro? Can you can you see me? Nah, your your your, your thing's spinning, man. Yeah, my thing. Oh nah, I got I got I got you there. Hold on. One second. Hold on, give me a second, man. Let me at least get a little appropriate here. <laughs> What's going on, bro? I'm chilling, man. We don't not here today, man. So I I need a, I need a bunch of co-hosts in. Here. They oh, want to jump in, man. Man, really? It's it's funny because the. It's a, it's a, it's going, it's it's going, it's, Orlando, so I'm free all day. It's going, it's going to be a free for all today, man. Any, anybody, anybody want to came up? They came up, bro. We, we Yo, here. It's, we here today, brother. What's going on? <laughs> I'm why, chilling, man. I'm I don't chilling. know why my thing looks like this. I don't like the way it looks. I don't know. So you may, you may oh, have to. Yeah, you may. Cause my thing keeps swirling. Let me uh. Hang yeah, up you, may, you may have to update your joint. <laughs> I get a new phone, man. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, John, John, what up, man? What's good, Mister Flowers? You already know what it is. Came up, bro. What's up? Let's talk. Staying on top of the roof. <laughs> Danny said you need to stand on top of the roof, huh? <laughs> yeah, you need to be on the roof with the with the antenna, bro. You gotta you gotta be on the roof with the satellite, my man. <laughs> yo, 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 what's good, bro? What's the word, man? What's the word, oh, man? man? Yo, KD out here, man, got his panties in a bunch. Yo, oh. listen, listen, let, let, listen, listen, listen. I, I need to I need to hear your take on it, cause. I got I got my own take on it. Like anybody, anybody like giving him his flowers about him going in on Michael Rappaport, bro. Michael Rappaport is a comedian. He's a troll. Yeah, that's what he's he does. A sucker, he's a sucker for that, for sure. Now, boy, yeah, listen. The only part, the only part that he's a sucker for is the fact that he 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 uploaded the the conversation. Yeah, exactly. That's why you know what I'm saying. Like like once you once you do that, you're no longer the victim. You feel what I'm saying? For sure. But but at the same time. KD, yo, this dude is a yo, he does this. Yo, he argues with but he argues with those. children. He mm -hmm. argues with yo, he, he creates burner accounts when he when he left OKC to defend mm -hmm. his move. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, anybody who's in KD's corner right now, I don't know what's going on with you, but there's no way you can be in a dude a dude like that corner because he's mad soft. If he's trying yeah. to compare himself to the greats like Braun and Jordan. Yo, you think Braun's gonna be in a in a back and forth with somebody on, on, on in a DM like this or text? And, and and that's what I think it is. Like what I think happened with KD was he was never given the he was never this man heart holding his phone. I don't know how you do it. Um, <laughs> nah, I got I got a stand, bro. Yeah, I, I can tell. You got you got to get a stand. So. <laughs> if, if, what I think happened with KD was that he was never given the platform that dudes like Steph Curry was given, LeBron James was given, all of these super-duper stars that that ended up with a brand that needed to be protected. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So when, yeah. you, see, when you see LeBron James ever get out of character, it's very rare. And yeah. it's, always, it's, it's, always, it's always something to do with race-driven issues right. or something like that. You've never seen Steph Curry out there getting nah. crazy in any kind of way because he's always had to protect the brand. KD was never given the light that these dudes were given, which 
when they were saying that the reason they felt like KD could never be the the star in Golden State was because he would never be able to live up to Steph Curry. Right. You get what I'm saying? And the love that Steph Curry was getting, he was like sort of jealous in a sense. Like, why why am I not getting that love? Clearly I'm the best on the team, but it's like, no, right. Steph Curry is the brand of that city or right. whatever the case is. Um, and him being so super sensitive is, is the only thing that like kills me. Because you would think every star knows. Bro, they wrote the N-word crazy all over Braun's crib over his house. He wasn't out there going crazy and doing all this kind of stuff. Yo, he was politically correct. He found his spots that he picked and choose where to become a little more vocal than he normally is. But look, yo, bro, I could literally imitate Braun's entire interview that he does after every game. So yo, he's like, that it's he's, like, he's like Jeter. He's like Jeter had the same thing, bro. Yeah. It was the same interview after every game. Yo, he, because he, he stayed, was protecting he stays, the brand. He stays politically correct. He doesn't do right. nothing to go against his name. Now, and, and again, like Kevin Durant has always been the dude, like you say, create burner accounts. He wants to get in tune. But what kills me is that he created the burner account so that he doesn't get himself in trouble talking as Kevin Durant, but then goes at Michael Rappaport like that. Right. And his, yo, he was but better his, off messaging him from the burner account. But here's the funny part about all of that stuff that you saw within the, the text message or the DM. Mm -hmm. You not beating nobody up, bro. You're not spitting in nobody's face, bro, because at the end of the day, you're a basketball player, and what your job is is more important than Michael Rappaport. But you don't understand that. Like, bro, he wanted, like, this, oh, this whole thing started because of the Charles Barkley interview. He didn't yes, like the way Charles Barkley that, asked that. him the question. He yeah, gave yeah. Charles Barkley a whole bunch of one-word answers and responses, and the interview was mad awkward. So Michael Rappaport said, yo, son, if you don't want to do the interview, just don't do it. But don't do that. And 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 for real, like I'm with him on that. Like, yo, if you gonna behave like that, don't do it. Just completely remove yourself from the situation. Yo, I ain't gonna lie to you, Charles. I, I don't I don't feel like talking to you today. I got something else to do. Mm. But once you put yourself out there like that, yo, you look stupid. His entire career, Rich, he's looked stupid. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like mm -hmm. Let LeBron do something like this. Yo, people would never let oh him forget it. But KD has had chance after chance after chance after chance, and nobody talks about it. And, 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 and again, and that's why I feel like the platform that LeBron has, the public pays 10 million times more attention to than Facts. the platform that Kevin Durant does. Because when Kevin Durant goes off the Richter scale, it's never really talked about crazy. Like we we've, we've known about the the culture has understood right. the burner account situation for such a long time. Nobody's it ever is. cared enough to make it public. Now, right. now my question would simply be if he were to have this altercation with someone like someone from like our community, let's say. Yeah. Do you think it would be this publicized? I don't even think so, bro. I don't. Just because it would be known as a culture thing, that's how these guys engage. Right. That's how they. But like, bro, them. remember when he remember when he went at the teenager? All the teenager did was give his opinion in regards to what he thought KD was or whatever it was. I think the move when he went to Golden State, KD argued with the dude. He's like, yo, dude, like the kid was more mature than this grown ass man. He was like, yo, dude, yeah. like that's my opinion. I you know, I respect you. You a player or whatever, but I'm gonna stick to my. I'm going to stick to my point. I'm going to stick to my angle. Like, that's what I'm – like, you know what it is with KD? I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I think he's insecure. He's very insecure about his place in history. He's always going to be behind LeBron's shadow. It doesn't matter how many titles he wins. It doesn't matter what he does. Anything he does, it will never supplant LeBron James. He went to Golden State and went with that stack roster – and thought that everybody was going to accept him for what he did. He's going to win a title. And then once, once the backlash came, he was like, well, wait a second. Like LeBron, Le LeBron did, and it was like, nah, what you did was completely different from what LeBron did. Mm -hmm. You joined a stacked deck, my dude. Yeah. And look what, and look what he's done now in Brooklyn. 
you go ahead and team with Kyrie and, and, and Harden and now everybody and their mother want to go over there, you stack the deck again. Bro, there's nobody in NBA history that has played with more All-Stars, more Hall of Famers than Kevin Durant. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that. That's a that's fact, true. bro. OKC, Golden State, Brooklyn. We're going to talk that's about Braun, but why people never talk about KD? You know why? Because he's the little bro, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and somebody just I see somebody just wrote KD never wanted the spotlight. Yeah, some people just built different. I agree. Yeah, I mean, but I I wouldn't even say that I think he didn't want the spotlight because I feel like if he didn't want the spotlight, he wouldn't have left OKC. Because Russell Westbrook wanted the spotlight. Russell Westbrook clearly wanted to be the star of that team. So I do feel really? like if he did because remember, he left after a year they could have eased they could have beat Golden State. Facts. That was the year they lost the three one thing. So it was up three one. Yeah, I, I do. I do feel like KD wanted the spotlight. I just don't think KD wants to be like a, like a a, a figure, like a like a. You get what I'm saying? Like like a public he wants, figure to the, the point thing, where the he thing has to talk and do all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't think he wants that. Like Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. To me, I feel it's very similar. Kawhi Leonard. Not that he necessarily doesn't want the spotlight. I don't think Kawhi wants to be the vocal leader. I don't see nah, nah, I, I, to nah, I get you. Leader. You get what I'm saying? I agree. I think so, I, I, I think I think with, with with KD, he he doesn't want to he doesn't want the responsibility of being a superstar. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to do the commercials. He doesn't want to do the kissing the babies thing. He doesn't want to be politically correct. But he wants all the the praise that comes with the superstar. He yeah, wants yeah. to be in that same light as Jordan, as Braun, as Kobe. But bro. Those dudes move differently. You don't move like that. So there's yeah. no way you can be able to be put in that box because you don't move like them. You're more in the Drexler box. You're more in the T-Mac box. That's where, he, that's where he's at. He was, he's never going to get any higher than that to me. Yeah, man. I, I, I tell you what. I don't care how many though, chips you win, bro. And I, don't but, matter. And I, was, and I was just about to ask, through all of this that's happening, if he wins a chip, does this go away? Nope. Because let me tell you, if he wins a chip this year with this team, this by far may be – I'm not going to say it's worse than Golden State, but it's right up there. Oh, no, so you go, worse than Golden State. So, all right, this so team, like, this there you go. This team would have handled Golden State. This is what I'm saying. So how, yeah. can, you, how can you respect a dude that has stacked the deck more than once? Anybody with your bro? What? But he, yeah, but you know, but you know what it is though. Like for me, LeBron James will be LeBron James until he retires will be the face of the NBA. No, no questions asked. He's always going to be the face of the NBA. Agreed. Everything happens sort of like helping the Lakers. Now I feel you have Kyrie on one team who I believe he doesn't like LeBron at all. You have KD who is chasing LeBron. The beginning of that season easily showed they were not going to come close to a championship. Yeah. They weren't going to come close to a championship. So them adding Harden, which I still think Kyrie pulled the most genius move in history, acting crazy and all this craziness just to make sure he's untradeable. Smartest thing ever done in the history of the NBA. That was actually worse. That's actually better than the way they got Paul Gasol to L.A. when they went to Chile. Come on, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, don't do that. But, so then they ended up getting a washed-up Griffin who, in 15 minutes of game, can become the old Griffin. Then you get LaMarcus Ulrich, who, if you give him 10, 15 minutes a game, he can produce almost like the old Ulrich because he doesn't have nothing else to do but kill himself for 10, 15 minutes. Right. That's the only way to beat the Lakers. The only way to beat the Lakers, bro. Yeah. Because if you think about it, if LA, if LA, again, it's it's a seven game series to beat LA in seven games, to me, will be really hard for the Nets. Here we go. You see what I'm talking about in the comments right here? It's the it's it's this like it's like people are reading from a script. So let me go ahead and educate you, my man, Metropolitan Report, my man Alfred. It's not the same thing. 
What LeBron James did in Miami is not the same thing that KD did in Golden State. It's not. LeBron James created this team in Miami. They teamed up at the same time. They didn't win no titles before he joined that team. Yeah, D-Way had the chip. I'm just talking about the actual team that was constructed before they did the big three. They didn't win no titles. KD joined the team that won 73 games and got beat in the finals when they were up 3-1. He joined that team. Them. And he lost to that team up 3-1. And it's funny because it's very similar to when Boston it's not real. Created, when Boston created that big three, right? That they actually created for LeBron James, right? If LeBron James would have joined that big three, what you think? Oh my been? God! It it have been a wrap. It have been a wrap. They'd, They'd have never up. let him forget it. All LeBron James did was say, "All right, cool. You're All right, you squad, got yours. Bro, I'm, I'm gonna get mine. Watch how I come back with my squad, and we exactly. make it happen." Exactly. Now, KD, if KD would have teamed up with whoever it was, uh, whoever else in the NBA, it didn't even matter. Right. And his main focus were to be to eliminate Golden State. Right. Nothing you can say. You wouldn't have heard no smoke. Nothing you can say. You wouldn't say. have heard no smoke. Yeah, there's nothing you can say. You I, wouldn't have heard I no do. smoke. So it's, it's not the same. It's not yeah. the same. LeBron James exactly. did not create super teams, Alfred. Super teams have always been around. Bro. The Lakers were a super the team in the 80s. Had the, super, the Celtics yeah. were a super team in the 80s. Yeah. What Agreed. are we talking about here? Agree. Like what? Like this is what I'm saying. Like people got to know their history, dude. LeBron James didn't create this. It's always been around. The NBA has always been top heavy. But in regards to what we're seeing right now with Brooklyn, we ain't never seen nothing like this. Nah, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm scared of Brooklyn, dude. Brooklyn, never. Is it. Brooklyn is it. Never. But because I think all Brooklyn was missing was a paint presence. And I don't even mean on offense. I mean on defense. Now, I mean, look, Aldridge's like, eyes. Right, man. Like, you have, I'm not going to have – you're right. And that's why I said LaMarcus Aldridge is not the solution. But what I think it adds, it adds DeAndre Jordan can give you 10 to 15 minutes of good work. Then you add LaMarcus Aldridge, who can give you 10 to 15 minutes of good work. You got and Nick then, Claxton. And then you also got Claxton, who can give you 10 to 15 minutes of work. So you're going to always have fresh, some, somewhat defensive legs at the five, which for another team's five who's going to be playing 30 minutes, you're going to be having fresh legs go at people like that all game long. That's why yeah. I say it changes the dynamic, because now LaMarcus Aldridge goes from an average player to a good player in 10 to 15 minutes. Because he doesn't have to preserve his, his all of his game for 30, 35 minutes a game. Same thing with Blake Griffin. If you can put Blake Griffin in the game between 10 to 20 minutes a game, you can get the old Blake Griffin within that time frame. Especially if he knows I only got 10 minutes to go crazy, he could just let it all out. You get what I'm saying? Versus trying to do what he did in, in, in Detroit. Kind of coast through the game and pick his spots to kill. And that he doesn't have to do that no more. You get what I'm saying? That's yeah. why I say it, yeah. changes, it changes everything because then you have Jeff Green backing him up. So that that five, that five and four position in Brooklyn is scary because they have five to six rotating pieces, bro, which is yeah. legit. Which is legit because Kyrie can give you 30-something minutes. James Harden can do the I, same. Listen, I ain't going to lie to you, bro. I'm going to I'm 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 give you this hot take right here. Bucks gonna beat them. You, you think the Bucks could do it? Bucks are going to beat them. I'm calling it right now. Drew I'll Holiday. Tell you why I don't, Drew I don't, Holiday, I would, Drew that, Holiday that. can be able to dog Kyrie. I'm not saying he's gonna no, stop no, him. But sure. Drew That's Holiday true. locks up. That's true. You now, you now with Drew Holiday, you are you now have Chris Middleton as your third scorer. That's where he always is supposed to be. He's never supposed to be a second dog. He can now slot into that third role, and he, he'll be very comfortable there. Plus, he's a decent defender. You put P.J. Tucker there as well, P.J. Tucker can be able to – P.J. Tucker is going to be a problem defensively for that, for, for that Nets team. Problem. You now got, you now got uh, Giannis there. So, still now, there. But so you, got you put P.J. Tucker on – you put P.J. Tucker on Durant? 
You can put PJ to nah, you got you 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 got uh you got Giannis to guard Durant. You got Giannis to guard Durant, and that right there, that's a wash. That's a wash. You know what I'm saying? PJ yeah. Tucker can be able to guard Blake, and he can be able to guard Aldridge. And on top of that, you got Chris Middleton, who's a long defender that can be able to cause disruption as well. So you got these three wing defenders that can really not even three, I'm saying four. You got four wing defenders, well, Holiday, Middleton, Tucker, and Giannis. Listen, that can cause I frustration. Say, I say like this about the Bucks. Two things I always know about the Bucks. In big I, moments. I, 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 I put money on hold. Yeah, fan podcast said put money on. How much how much we betting? How much we betting? Hey, I'll, you, I'll go, you can't, I'll you go can't say money. You can't like, man. save money. You gotta use like you gotta use other terms. <laughs> you gotta use other things nowadays. Um, yeah, word, word, word. But what I say is the two things I know for sure about the Bucks, Chris Middleton never comes up in big moments. And in two, playoffs is Giannis Kryptonite. Because every coach in America knows you can put a center on him and wait for him at the free throw line. As long That's as fair. He's, as long as he's still not hitting threes and he's still shooting like 50-something percent at the free throw line, Bucks don't stand a chance. That's that's fair, but but I can also counter with this. Give me the last time Harden had a great playoff game. Yeah, but whether Harden had a great playoff game or not, he's still with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. He's with okay. two world champions, bro. But we're talk we're matter. talking we're talking about if Kevin Durant's gonna be healthy. We're talking about if Kyrie's going to be healthy. Like we, we making all of these, all of these predictions, this matchup, as no, to say true. that this team is going to be healthy come playoff time. That's true. I mean, but I, but it's always been known that come playoff time, Harden struggles to lead a team. Now, right. remember, in playoff time, they expect Harden to do all the scoring, all the assists, rebounding, and you know his regular right. triple double game, which always changes in the playoffs. But now his only job in the playoffs is to really maybe get 15 assists, really score 16, 18 points, maybe clutch shots or whatever the case is. But if you have Kevin Durant, who we've seen what he do come playoff time, and then you got Kyrie, you see what he's doing, what he's known for come playoff time. Well, you don't need much, bro. You don't with them. Well, here's, them three, here's, you don't the, much. here's the asterisk when you, when you say about Kyrie Irving, right? I, I'll give you all that. Kyrie Irving, tough. Cool. But we've only seen him be tough with LeBron James. That's true. That's true. So he went to he went to Boston, wasn't available because he was hurt. He also they, then when he was available, they stunk it up. So outside of LeBron, I gotta st I, the jury's still out to see what Kyrie can be able to do in the playoffs. Because we all know that LeBron is the superstar whisperer. Any superstar goes next to Braun, they gold. We saw what Kate, yeah. we saw what AD did in the finals last year. Gold. So I want to see what he's going to be able to do this season because everybody talking about Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, man. But yo, but BJ, regardless of what, they're undeniable. <laughs> they don't play D. They are undeniable. They don't play defense. Undeniable. And again, like, think about it. They have experienced players they, they have starters. they have experienced players but here's also what they have with those experienced players my man what choke artist yep who Blake Griffin choke yeah. artist in the playoffs Lamarcus Aldridge the reason why he never found his rhythm in San Antonio is because once he got there Greg Popovich understood that he wasn't a dog and he was immediately he was in Greg Popovich's doghouse. He was like, oh, okay, you are definitely not Tim Duncan. You are nowhere near Tim Duncan in regards to skill, in regards to mindset, in regards to mentality, in regards to leadership. This is not going to work. So everybody wants to talk about Aldridge and Blake. Yo, I know these dudes. I watched them their entire career. They ain't never did nothing in the playoffs. Never. Yeah, I think Greg Popovich saw a little bit of like a Tim Duncan and uh, Aldridge between prior that, to like, signing between him. that that mid range game. Yeah, that, prior that to signing him. 
Yeah, but yeah, I one, that's, why, he, that's why I think he definitely does. He signed him because he was like, yo, I think Aldridge can be the missing piece for us to keep contending. But once he got him in the building, he was like, oh, no. Nah. Yeah, no, he, he, <laughs> oh, no. Nah. He, he ain't about that. He ain't about that life. Yeah, but you know I, I, still, I still believe, like, yo, even if all five of those guys play average or above average, that's still better than 90% of the NBA. Now, I tell, you, I tell you what. I tell you what, though. Clippers are trying to get Boogie Cousins, right? I think I think they, I think they got him already. Yo, let me tell you something. Boogie Cousins get in shape. That's going to be a problem of a team. Not that Boogie Cousins will be a huge deciding factor, but his size and presence. It's it's nobody will focus on Boogie, but you can't not focus on Boogie. You let me tell you saying? something. I, I, I hear you, and here's what I think about that signing. The only thing Boogie Cousins is going to have to be worried about is where to put his jacket because when you're in the basement, you got to make sure that it's drafty in there. You got you to gotta make sure, you, you know, the, the, the space heaters are, 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 are together. You got to make sure that all of that stuff is working, the dehumidifier, that you take the water out and make sure you oh, – that's what he got to worry about. Ain't nobody worried about no Clippers, man. Nobody worried about no Clippers. Out. Yeah, I just think that you say – Nuggets, Nuggets tough. Nuggets are gonna be a problem. Oh, man, again, Nuggets Portland, is Portland is gonna be a problem. Portland, Portland um, but you know what though, I always Phoenix. say this about Portland. Portland, they run that same offense where they depend on perimeter shooting between Dame and McCullum every year. But but, but here's the difference though, Rich. I agree with you a hundred percent that that's that's how they run their team. But the addition of Norm Powell is huge. That dude can be able to get his own shot, drive to the basket, penetrate, put put pressures on, put, uh, put pressure on the defense. So when he sucks that defense in, it leaves their shooters wide the fuck open. Yeah, but you don't think Norm because Norman Powell is a shooting guard. Not nah, right. he's more of a slasher. Yeah, but but he but he's a he's an undersized small forward though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's but under, he's they're... an undersized small forward. So my my thing would be, if if they go up against small forwards, that's going to be legit. You're going to have Dame McCullum and Norm, Norman Powell. If they play the Lakers, how they going how they going to how they going to adjust with that? Oh, listen, I'm like, look, look, look. We talking about competing with the Lakers? Yeah, but I mean, oh. even if they go up against Brooklyn. I, listen, I don't think Norman Powell, Powell, Norman, Powell, Norman Powell is going to literally leave McCullum exposed. Yeah. Completely exposed. So, because McCullum is not known for, for defense. So, N neither of them are. Yeah. What, but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, Norman, that's why I, I thought they were going to use Norman Powell as like the, the bench energizer, like the dude that comes off the bench and kind of eases the, the pressure on Dame and McCullum. You know what I mean? They can, still, they like can still probably do that, though. So much. Yeah, yeah, and but I see they're starting him, so that's why I was saying like I'm not sure exactly what they're doing in Portland. Yeah, yo, what do you think about Melo, dude? How, how much? How much you think he got left? Yo, honestly, bro, Melo, Melo has looked pretty good, man. So I think, I think if Melo wanted to play two more seasons, I think he really could. Yeah, because at because a, the way level? I I think next season he can play at a high level. Mm -hmm. With like you know, I, I can definitely see him still being able to, to to contribute at a high level. The year after that, I would definitely say, you know, he's just going to be a guy that just on the roster and can be able to just be a veteran presence. Good, bro. But the thing, the thing with Melo was that you know his jump shot is still pure, man. And when you can be able to shoot like that, you still have the ability to contribute, man. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But, still, I, but but what do you think about him defensively? Because like I really feel like yo once yo once Melo missed a couple shots, yo he's just a waste of space out there, man. Well, I I tell you this, I've seen more effort out of him playing in Portland than I've seen in the last decade in regards to defensive effort. You know what I'm saying? He's never been he's never been quick footed. That's all. That's yeah. always been the thing with Melo. Like defensively, he's never been a lateral guy. He couldn't. He, they can't really move his feet east to west. So yeah. with age. Obviously, he's going to get worse. So he can be able to – he can guard fours that are physical, that won't be able to that, – that, that can't really take it off the dribble. He can do that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they can be able to play a smaller lineup where he can be a stretch five and really cause havoc. He can do that. So 
you know, there's there's certain things that they can be able to do to kind of like keep him legit. But yeah, like like you said, defensively, you 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 get what you get from Melo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. he's not gonna he's not gonna stop guys all, but he's going to play hard. And so that's the one thing that you know with Melo in regards to this Portland run is that he plays hard. He does he doesn't seem like he quits. You know what I'm saying? Like how it used to be in in other situations. Now, does Denver move Utah right out the way? Hell yeah, it's Utah. It's Utah. Yo, listen. Yo, I, I always make the joke, right? Everybody's talking about the NCAA tournament. Yo, Gonzaga looked tough. I said, son, it's Gonzaga. They not winning nothing. They just like the Jazz. They you, can be you, don't think, you don't think Gonzaga doing it this year? Nope. Ah, nope. I'm not going to lie, bro. They, yo, they play, they play, I don't, they play perfect basketball. Like, Give me not, Baylor. What happened? Give me Baylor. You you like Baylor over? You like Baylor over them? I like Baylor, Baylor was a national I, championship. I called, I called Baylor winning the national championship. Me too. Me too. I called Baylor winning the national championship. It yeah. gotta be, it's gonna be Baylor Gonzaga. I'm I'm sure. I'm sure. But listen, Gonzaga been good for the last fifteen years. They ain't winning no damn national championship because it's Gonzaga. Undefeated. That would be crazy. It's Gonzaga. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but you know that that's the same thing I was saying about Utah is that. The whole year, you top and kill him, kill him, kill him. You see their record, they just, you know, the, the record looks crazy. Donovan Mitchell's crazy. But at the end of the day, it's Utah. Nobody believes in this team. You know why? I got two words for you. The reason why they don't believe in this team. Rudy, Rudy Gobert. Go right? <laughs> Anybody getting paid that much money and you can't produce, can't trust you in the playoffs. Can't trust you. Yo, but I ain't gonna lie to you. I always thought he was a bum too, but I do think yep. he's played better this year, though. He's a, yo, bro. He's a he's a role player. If listen, if Rudy Gobert was making fourteen million dollars a season, yo, yes. would nobody have a problem with him? Yes. But once you start making that type of cash, bro, you gotta at least give me twenty or fifteen, at least. Ah, man, I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't see him as that kind of player, even if he was making. Nah, he, he doesn't have the ability. I think he's just, he doesn't have the ability. But I, I, I think teams – but I think any team in the NBA will take him. Of course. And any team in the NBA will pay him. Nah, I, don't think, I don't think so. I don't think there's a team that would be like, you're not worth $20 million. I, Listen, if he was on the Lakers, I don't think the Lakers pay him. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't think the Lakers pay him. I don't know, dude. Gobert and, and Anthony Davis, there's no way you're not giving him 20 You ain't going to pay Gobert more than you pay AD? No way. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. No yeah, way. For sure. Yeah, for, for sure. But they wouldn't let him go easy. Yeah, well, listen. They, they'd offer him and say, listen, man, we give you we give you $6. Uh, <laughs> we give you $6. You don't want to take that. We got to We got to Look, I, th I think Utah – does exactly what they're doing now. They have a great regular season. They come playoff time, they get bumped real easy. Always, bro. Yeah, always. I, I think always. I've, said that since, I've said that since the beginning. But, always, but again, I always, I always feel like it's LeBron's show. His legacy will always remain wherever he went. He was in the chip. Right. And the storyline is going to become every team tried to put together the best players ever for one man. Bro, it's, so it's literally, that, that it's literally, it's literally Space Jam, son. That's nah. what it feel like. Yo, they have five Olympic medalists on that team. The same thing with Golden State. Five Olympic medalists starting, starting in one NBA. But I think it does suck, though. I mean, I think it's great for like the entertainment point, as far as like star players, like star teams, Lakers, Brooklyn. Yeah, Brooklyn. you you need. It's always top it, it sucks for the other teams, just cause like. You look at teams that have potential, like the teams that actually have potential, and I don't, I, I don't really don't want to use the Knicks. <laughs> um, but you look at you look at a team like Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who who has a who has a team that has like some kind of potential to do something? Who knows what it is, but do right. something? It's just right. it it just sucks because they're so. sense for them to try to do anything because if, yeah. if, if, if you're smart if i'm another coach of these low level teams even if my team is good i'm not trying to win every game 
Because what's the point of making the playoffs as, as a seventh seed, ruining your chances for a great pick in the lottery? Yeah. You know what I mean? Only to have to know you're going to deal with Brooklyn. Yeah. Only to know that you're going to run right into Nuggets or the Lakers. It doesn't make no sense. I might as well tank it. Yeah. And then, you know, go for the number one pick or top ten pick just to see if I can get myself on that nah, level. I hate you know what I mean? I hate like, you, bro. It, it I... And that's why I think it sucks because all the other teams is just shot. So what do you – what did you hear – did you hear the whole – this whole uh, – I wouldn't say controversy, but there's like – Back and forth between Stephen A. Smith, Russell Westbrook, and Russell Westbrook's wife? No. What happened? So Stephen A. Smith has always been on the on, on the side of Russell Westbrook is a great player, but yeah. he ain't he's no championship. He's no championship point guard. He's not a winner. Okay. You know what I'm I think I did see something like that. Yeah. So he said he said, yo, you know, it's time for Russ to start prioritizing winning championships than just putting up stats. Mm. So Russ answered with, yo, you know, I made it when I, I got to the NBA, I, when I made it out of my hood. Yeah. And then his wife was like, oh, you always criticizing my man. Like, listen, th this is the thing I don't understand. Why do people like to personalize their situation? Like if somebody who... His job is to criticize or analyze or talk mm -hmm. basketball. Why mm -hmm. do you think the, why do you feel the need to, to get personal? Like he's talking about your basketball game. He ain't say nothing about you growing up. He ain't say nothing about your wife. He ain't say nothing about your family. He's talking about your basketball game that's public for everybody to see. So if your if your job is public, I can be able to criticize that and say, like, listen, your whole career, you've come up short. You've played with we you play with great players, and you've still come up very short, all because of your style of play. So maybe it's time for you to change your style of play and prioritize winning championships because you're already a Hall of Famer. If you go get a championship now, you put yourself in a different bracket. He don't understand that, and that's always been my problem with Russell Westbrook is that everybody want to talk about, oh, yo, yo, he's tough. He's a stat pattern. Yeah. That's all he is. For sure. That's all he will ever be. And that's why you see this team in Washington, they struggle because you can't put another superstar or two with that guy. You can't do it. The yeah, way he plays nobody basketball. Wants, nobody wants to be, bro, wants to be a part of that. Could you, ima could, could you imagine being in the NBA and being a rookie and you get drafted to a team that has Russell Westbrook on it? Yeah, you're not happy with that. And you're, com if, you're coming from a situation where you're, for you being a stuff, right. then you're, yeah, you're coming, he's going to ruin You're it. coming from a situation where you're a scorer. You're not a role guy. You're a guy that can be able to fill up, put the, put buckets up. You can be able to space the floor. You can create offense for other people. But you're playing with a guy that doesn't give you the ball. He takes more jump shots, and he's the most inefficient jump shooter in the league. Yeah. But I also think that the league, the, the era we're in, is just way more sensitive. Hundred percent, bro. Like, all, of these, all of these stars, like, I feel like if you're not getting, I, I've always been told, like, yo, if you're not spoke about, if people don't talk about you, then you worry. Right. That's when you worry. Is but when people are talking about you, that means something. So that does right. mean, like, yo, dude, legit. People know you're nice. People know you're good. They just have an expectation of you that you're just not meeting. Right. So for a dude like Russell Westbrook, you can have the idea like, yo, you know what? This dude is tough. He has the skill set, the ability to do great. He just doesn't want to. Right. But these players are so accustomed to yes men, and they're so accustomed to getting praised their entire high school career, college career. When they get into the NBA, they're, they just can't understand that Stephen A. legit just has a job. His job is to report his doing opinion. his job, bro. Everybody, job. Has, everybody has an opinion, but and, right. and, and and that's why, like I said, it sucks for for like it sucks for the people that those those like that help that it helps them. You know what I mean? Like again, like I feel like 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 LeBron. Like, I know I'm using LeBron, but LeBron would do things and then mention like, yeah, I heard that interview. I heard him when he said that. 
but he used that for fuel more so than used it to get back at, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I, I just think it's an era of just sensitive dudes, man. Dudes who, because even Kobe, Kobe was a jerk. Yeah. But Kobe got it done. He didn't. He wasn't for the arguing and doing all this stuff that people do. But hey, people. I guess people forget how. I guess people don't know how to separate the professional part from you know. Not this, a the, the The sensitivity of they their, their feelings, bro. Like you get paid a a million and however many dollars to entertain. You're gonna right. be spoke about. You're going to be hated. You're going to be right. loved. That's just right. a part of the game. Like, that's right. just what it is. Right. So, I don't know. It just affects people differently. Yeah, bro. Because, like, listen, I, I do a podcast. If somebody says your, your podcast sucks, I'm not – I'm I ain't looking at it like, oh, yo, this dude coming at my neck. Like, bro, all right, cool. You don't like the podcast. But I, I don't personalize that. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't understand how athletes nowadays but, – but, but it goes back to what you were saying. It's the AAU baby mentality. That's what it is. When you're nine years old and everybody's telling you, you are the best player to ever play. You're the best thing ever. You're the greatest player in your, in your, in your town. You're the best player in the country. All of that. All you keep hearing is that you're the best. So once you get to a certain level where people stop saying that to you, it's like, yo, we got a problem personally? Like, yeah. You don't yeah. think I'm good? Like, nah, bro. I'm, it's not. I got nothing to do with that. My job is to criticize people like you. That's my job. Yeah. If you yeah. playing good, I praise you. If you playing crappy, I'm gonna. I, I have to talk about it. Yeah. I can't not talk about it. But that's the thing. It's the AAU mentality, bros. They, like it's, these kids, I'm they you, don't man, understand man. what it is to have adversity on the court or have people yeah. talk negatively about you all the time because everybody's up your ass all the time. Yeah. And, and, and again, like, I think, like I was just saying, it goes back to, like, you figure, like, they grew up in, like, this social media era where, right. every, ev where everything is put up on social media and you get the comments of all the love and everything, you know, that happens there. Right. They don't have, like, it's not like when we grew up. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it wasn't that. Like, when we grew up, you had to come out every day and, like, legit show you nice like it wasn't right. you couldn't just take one game or two games you played and put a little video together putting all the good moves from all the games and just sell yourself online and just look like you nice you know what i mean like right. it, it, it's just a different time and they grew up somewhere where they sell themselves right like these dudes are legit a brand like they sell yes. themselves yeah. through the internet you know what I mean? So when they're getting all this praise to then meet somebody who's just trashing you, there's no way. Like, because, look, he spoke about basketball and his priorities in basketball. Right. He took it to his his upbringing. Right. Like, it got like, nothing to do with you. That's, like that's not what he mentioned. That's yeah, not what he mentioned. Feel, yeah, you should feel like a champ that you made it out the hood into the NBA, yeah, only one, two percent of the population gets to ever play in the NBA. Yeah, we get that. But what does that have to do with your thoughts on how you're treating your career? Right. What, is, what, is, what is that? Forward? Right. What does that have to do with your shortcomings as a professional athlete? Not as a man. No. Not right. as a father. Not as a husband. As an athlete. As of what you've done in your career. You have not. You've gotten to one NBA final and you choked in that final. And you never got back. You played in four conference finals, and you you weren't able to punch the ticket more than once. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that like, I just don't I, I just don't understand it. Somebody says, "Yeah, hey, bro, you know you you got to step it up on the court." What'd you say about me? Like, what are you talking about? No, We're yeah. not talking about you personally, bro. We're talking about your game, your basketball game, your baseball game, your your. Your, your rap lyrics, whatever it is. Like, that's your profession. That's what I'm talking about. And I don't know when we'll ever get out of this, this, like, this, this mindset, bro, of this sensitivity because they're all, they're all just, they're all the same now. All of these so, athletes are the same. So, so let me ask you this then. Do you think Westbrook at some point gives in? No, I don't. He doesn't have the basketball IQ to give in. I was, I was gonna. I think that he doesn't like 
in older age, his game won't translate. No, it doesn't. Because his game is his game is like so stuck on athleticism and using his speed and everything that he has. So like you look you look at like Braun, Braun who now at an older age got a jump shot. Even yeah. Derrick Rose, you look at Derrick Rose who first came in, he was giving him the jump shot. He ended up developing that mid range. Right. So it always would keep him in the game, even if he's unathletic like he kind of is now. But I don't think Westbrook game translate to having a jump shot, coming off the screen and doing shit like Chris nah. Paul does. Like you know what like I mean? I said, like, like, like I said, Rich, it's it it all the it all depends on or all comes down to his basketball IQ. He's a great athlete, right? Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you that you think the game. Yeah. Right. Westbrook doesn't think the game. He just reacts. He's a reactionary player. Yeah. LeBron is a thinker. Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard is also a thinker. You got Chris Paul, who is a cerebral guy. He's a thinker. He's not that. He's just a physically a physical guy, athletic, can be able to dunk over you, run by you, not get tired. But in regards to thinking about, all right, this is the last two minutes of the game. I got to make a spark play here. Nah, he plays the same way in the first two minutes than he does in the last two minutes. Yeah. There's no difference. Why? Because his basketball IQ is not as high as his athleticism. So Yo, Jay, I would say J2 Fresh said, what do you mean by give in? I mean by give in, like, kind of dumbing down his game to fit playing with other players so that he can play championship-like basketball. And I mean, like, you know, kind of like a, a, a Kevin Durant in the sense of, like, forming a team or joining a team that has contenders and then now saying, all right, you know what, instead of me focusing on trying to force a triple-double every night or maintain this triple-double status of, you know, always trying to crash the boards and do so much scoring, more right. so than being like what James Harden is doing now, where it's like, all right, instead of trying to score 40 a night, I'm going to get my little 20-something, and if I got to score 30, I'll do it here. But I'm going to mainly be the facilitator. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, again, like, Westbrook still has the – like, he still has the intensity to play defense, which I think is still good for him at this point in his career now. If, if all that pressure wasn't on him for offense, and I think he has so much added pressure. Somebody wrote it in the chat. They blame him for a lot of craziness that went on, such as Kevin Durant leaving or, you know, him ruining the Oklahoma City team or whatever the case is. So he has so much more to prove, which I think is like that chip on his shoulder. You know what I mean? So I do yeah. feel like the only way he'll ever win a chip is if he decides, yo, instead of trying to average, average a triple-double, I'm going to just try to score 17, 18 points a game and try to average like 10, 10 11 assists a game while my teammates are tearing it up. That's well, 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 that's what I said. Like, it, like I said, it, it all goes back to his IQ and how he sees the game. No, he, sure. when he, when he got drafted, he was not a point guard. Yeah, Scott Brooks forced him to turn point guard. So you got to give him credit to be able to adapt to that position with his athleticism, his physicality. But what happened was when KD left. Jess, what up, bro? When KD left, he was like, yo, I can be able. So I got free reign to just do what I have to do. So I can be able to rebound. I can grab every board. I can assist on every pass. I can score, whatever. He realized that, okay, I can do this every night. And people are going to look at my stats and say, yo, he's, he's tough. He's legit. But what he doesn't understand now at age 32 is that you can't keep playing like that. Like, you prove that you can average a triple-double for three straight years. Impressive. Right? It's never yeah. going to be done again. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is now at 32, there's a lot of guys that go down the same path as him. Allen Iverson. You know, Carmelo Anthony at a certain point, he, he ended up like having that stubborn mentality to the point where the NBA had to say, we just don't want you anymore. He had to change. He's at that age now. He's about to be 33 years old. Next year, if he comes back on this team and he's doing the same nonsense, they're going to be in the same situation. And the management is going to look at him and be like, Got to get yo, my dude, 
Like at you, some point, you gotta be you gotta be the, the 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 veteran leader here and not say I gotta get mine. Westbrook has always been the guys. Just like when we play rec ball, right? Mm -hmm. After the game, you get smacked by thirty, and somebody's over there checking the stat sheet. I got my forty. Yeah, but you lost by thirty. Yeah. So what does it matter? Yeah. He's never learned how to be a leader. He's never learned how to how to make players better. His stats are th that's all they are. They're not impactful. They're just numbers. Bradley Bill don't fit him though. Bro, he don't fit nowhere. No, no, but you know what? I I think Bro, he don't fit nowhere. Listen, I I tell you like this. The squad he had. See, for a dude like Westbrook, it's sort of similar to uh, 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 Kobe, right? And I'm not comparing him to Kobe. I'm just saying it's sort of similar to Kobe. Because when Kobe played on that Laker team, D. Fish didn't demand the ball, but he got his job done. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Pal Gasol didn't demand. He didn't need to have the ball in his hand all day. He got the well, job Pal, done. Pal, 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 Pal was a – Pal was but, – but, but see, the thing is, that's where – I, I hear what you're saying, but those guys were top level players that didn't have egos. Yeah. But even still, Kobe fought the game. That's that's the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like Westbrook don't think the game, bro. He don't he don't see the parts on his team and say, "Yo, I got this beast right here. I got this young Danny Abdia here. I got this dude here. I, I gotta prep them up. I gotta get them ready." He don't look at it that way. It's all about, yo, what, you look at the numbers, Westbrook shoots 10 for 38, 25 points, 19 rebounds, 12 assists. Yeah. But you it's see Danny thing. Abdia, Danny Abdia got five shots. Yeah, no, no, Somebody no. else got two shots. And, and, and that's why I said, like, in OKC, when, when, when Westbrook had all those shooters around him and he was getting 15 assists, like, I think the first year he got, he was averaging that triple-double. He had players around him that was – Decent, not great playoff like players, but that's why I said like he's gonna need those type players, but also seasoned. Like he's well, gonna that, need that, that's he's a problem. Gonna need, he's gonna need those vets that were also used to be nice. That is sort of similar to him, where it's like all he, right, we all he will need to change. He will all if he doesn't change his game, Rich. He will always be the circus attraction. He will always be the big elephant in the room to be able to entertain the children. What I mean by that is that no franchise that is thinking about a championship wants Westbrook. Re wants Russell Westbrook. Yeah, I agree with the that. The teams that want him are the teams that have no star power, they have a whole bunch of young players, and they have cap space. That's the only reason why they would want him. Nobody says, yo, I want to play with that guy. I need that guy. No front office is saying, yo, if we add this dude, like how Chris Paul – was added to Phoenix because they were like, yo, if we get Chris Paul, this Phoenix team can be able to take off. And you see exactly what we're saying? He doesn't have that type of, uh, of impact. Yeah. You put Westbrook on the Phoenix Suns, they are one of the worst teams in the NBA. Yeah, I don't because he doesn't fit a guy like Devin Booker. Because he doesn't yeah. fit. Yeah. He doesn't fit that's Booker's why I think, I don't think He don't fits, fit Aiden. I don't think he fits Bradley Bill either. Like, I don't, bro, he, I don't, I don't, anybody I don't, I don't, who's a legit superstar, he don't fit, bro. He has to be on a team that was designed like a like a Philadelphia 76ers for Allen Iverson. They put him around nothing but role players. Exactly. And that's why I said. He like, needs guys that can be able to just play defense and rebound the ball. That's it. And when he had when he had that team in OKC, that's exactly how he put up those numbers. But if you notice, when Victor Oladipo, uh, when Victor Oladipo was there, Victor Oladipo was okay. But once he got traded to to to, to Indiana, uh, Indiana, he started killing. Why? Because he was like, "Yo, I finally got a chance to be able to spread my wings." I, you yeah. can, no no young player, no established player can be able to spread their wings with a Russell Westbrook on your team. He's a yeah. succubus, bro. Yeah, yeah. straight facts. You don't make nobody yeah, better. That's what, and that's why I said Russell Westbrook don't got a shot unless unless he's willing to completely dumb down his game. Yeah, six, six a million. He, he definitely gets 40, 100%. But he's going to take 45 shots to get that 40. And he's also going to lose the game by 20. I don't need that. I don't need that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that nobody wants to play with this dude because of his – it's not the fact that he's a bad person. 
It's just his basketball game. It's like you got you got some of your mans that you can't play ball with. That's your man. But when it comes to playing on the court, I can't play that dude. We don't we don't gel. We don't mesh. That's what that's Westbrook. Yeah, not for sure. For sure. What do you think? What do you think about the um? What do you think about the Andre Drummond thing, man? I think that's amazing. I think it's amazing. I think that puts them that puts them of Brooklyn in the front court because Drummond is going to dominate. Because honestly speaking, like when you talk about like NBA now, you got to talk about specific teams. There's no more NBA. It really doesn't matter what Drummond does against the Raptors. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You really just got to talk about what he's going to do against the Clip Show, uh, uh, Philly, Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Like, those type of games. I think AD and Drummond together is going to be a problem for everybody. Yeah. I think I think now you put AD in his element. Which Powerful. Is, which, which is, I don't need to get beat up no more. So now you're right. going to have AD playing baseline and mid-range all game long, which is Ooh. where he loved to be. Remember when right. he had Boogie, when it was him and Boogie, the yeah. phone was tearing Killing. him up. Killing. So, now, so now you put Drummond, who's going to basically lock down the paint. And I was just talking with a friend of mine earlier who was saying, like, Drummond has been excellent pretty much his whole career. It's just never been spoken about because he's never done it on a team that was about anything. Right. So now if he comes to the Lakers and put up those same exact numbers – He's gonna look. Uh, he's gonna look like the best center in the league, just because now he's doing it on such a stage that's national. That it's gonna be ten times more than it was when he did it on Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it. If you come on the team, he's averaging 15, 16 rebounds. That's Bro, he average. He averages fourteen rebounds for his career, son. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, exactly, and and that's what any coach. That's crazy. Would. That's what any right. coach wants. So now if he comes to, to the Lake Show and he averages 18 and 15, that's ridiculous. And you, know, and you know what's crazy, too? The reason why I like it is because the fact that LeBron and AD are out right now, he can be able to put up the big numbers for this team so he can get comfortable. And then when LeBron and AD get back, then he kind of settles into a role. Yeah. So – it's good for him to be able to have this solo chance right now to kind of showcase his ability. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I, I can get like he's gonna make his debut tonight. I think Drummond goes out there and gets 25 and 20. Like he he has the ability to do that. Yeah. On a nightly basis, bro. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and yeah. the one thing that I like about him too, that a lot of people don't don't talk about is his ability to be able to 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 move in the pick and roll. He can move his feet. And then he's a he's a setting, six and ten guy two eighty for LeBron James. Which is yeah, exactly. And just like someone just wrote, just like Jay just wrote, he's and LeBron James gonna make him better. Right, right. Fan podcast just wrote, should A D sit out for the rest of the year? No, I don't think he should sit out for the rest of the year. I think they I think they should bring him back you know, with 10 games left in the season to get his feet wet, get him, um, you know, get him back into the rhythm. Get him because for what I'm, for, yeah, for what I'm, for what I'm hearing right now, he's looking spry, he's looking good. So, you know, they, they're not gonna, they're not gonna rush him back. They're gonna, like I said, 10, five games left in the season, you'll see AD come back. With Braun, I think Braun comes back earlier than that. You know, Braun's gonna want to be on the court. Come on, so, man. Um, got legacy to chase, man. He's never yeah, Braun got that legacy to chase. Plus, he all he wants to see what playing with Drummond is before the playoffs. You know how Braun is. Braun is very cerebral. He needs to see how all the pieces fit. And I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I don't see a, a team in the West that has a chance against the Lakers. They just they don't have a chance. The only thing that this team was missing was rim protection and rebounding. They got that with one guy. And then it makes Montrez Harrell's role that much more oh, dangerous. Could you, could you imagine a combination between Harrell and Drummond? That's going to look crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a scary – that's a scary uh, – that's a scary front court. Right, because think, think about it. Harrell, Harrell is not a quick-footed guy. 
So he can do what we used to do back in the day where I'll lead him, I'll lead him to the rim, and you deal with it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I had that. I had, I had, I had you back on that. You feel what I'm saying? So like, like, so you know me. Like, I could be able to lock somebody up if I wanted to. But just to give him that little hope, give him that space on that baseline, go ahead, bro. If you can get by me, cool. But you're not finishing today. That's oh, exactly yeah. what the Lakers are going to do. You're yeah. going to see Harold get more aggressive. He's going to funnel people to that baseline. So once they get past him, now you now you dealing with 6'10", 280. You don't want to deal with that at the rim. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, yo, drumming, drumming is going to be huge, bro. Drum, drum, yeah. Drumming is going to be huge. That they, Their squad, I think, and that's why I think the Lakers squad is built to go against the Nets. They are built to go against the Nets. And they also built to, you know, like you said, the little brothers downstairs, the basement, the basement right. guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, 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 uh, they over here, they got to make sure that they gather around that, that, that space. Like a little shawl or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Warm, Put the shawl you know over, mean? you know, they, they, they can share, they can share a blanket. You know what I'm saying? They can all kind of like huddle in like that. They can do that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because now, everybody talking about Rondo. They talk, come on, man. I I ain't worried. Like for them to think that Rondo is gonna be able to do what he did for the Lakers again, nah, nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, nah. now I tell you this: if Rondo gets the light and he's able to hit threes like he was in LA, it could be a bit of a problem. But I don't see them having enough for seven games. No way. Because no I, that means Paul George will have to play great basketball for seven games, which I don't see happening. I don't see I don't see Paul George dominating that. He said, so my man, my man Jaja said, our, our our bet should be that I wear a Clippers jersey. Yo, you you trying to you trying to kill me? You trying to kill me, fam? Like don't and, do and, that. And like, you gotta buy a Zubac. You gotta buy a Zubac <laughs> jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Man, podcast, I ain't gonna lie, man. We gotta talk about that. We'll talk about that, man. I, I, I may have to take you up on, on that bet, man, because I, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna be wearing no Clippers jersey. I'll tell you that straight up. I ain't be wearing nobody's Clippers jersey. Nobody. Nah, yo, bro, Bron, yo, again. And the thing, what I think happened too, and it also, I feel like it happened with AD. Yeah. When he started playing with Bron, because Jay just wrote that, just wrote, um, Bron makes a difference and his players low key. Hundred percent. Yo, because I feel like when players show up to play with Braun. Yo, they see the dedication in Braun. And they I feel see, like a different they, understand, animal. they understand anybody who plays with Braun understand what Braun is chasing. That's right. no secret. We ain't That's chasing no, no record. We, we ain't chasing no division title. We're not chasing the number one seed in the West or the East. We're chasing chips. finals and chips, bro. And Mount Rushmore like things is what he's That's going it. after. So when AD came, you notice AD, because AD was injured every other game. Mr. Glass. Always. That changed. He started playing right. through injuries, which which was impressive. Right. Then you get all these players that come in and they understand. Now you add Drummond to that. So every right. player who's good heightens their game because of Braun. Facts. And then you're playing with a dude who understands the game the way Braun understands it. So every player is going to get better playing with Braun. And that's just the nice. credit that he gets. That's facts. That's, that's definitely facts. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Like that's 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 a hundred percent, bro. Like like people don't understand the like everybody that comes around LeBron James, they level up. Like no matter what it is, whether their you know their three point percentage goes up or their confidence goes up as players. Like look, look at look at Tht, look at that kid. He went from barely playing last season to yo, he's a he he looked he's a tough. Problem. He's a problem right now. He's a problem right KC, now. KC yo KCP. Look at KCP did in the playoff game here. Like it's all about finding that role and elevating your role, and that's what yeah. Braun does. And that's why I love LeBron because everybody wants to criticize him all about you know you got to take the last shot. Nah, he's talking about the the best basketball play, and also I'm building confidence over here. If I can be able to be willing to give the ball up to a to a Alice Caruso or a Montrezl Harrell or whoever it is, I'm building their confidence for the playoffs. That's what Phil Jackson used to do with his role players. 
He used to always give them situations where they can be able to excel in the regular season. So he would know when I call your number in that playoff, you're going to be ready. Don't matter if you had three DMPs before this. You're going to be ready. <clears throat> and that's what Braun does. That's why he continues to dish it the way he does. That's why he continues to be the vocal leader that he is because he's always preparing these dudes for that big shot. I'm always going to go to you. If you're open, you're getting the ball. You don't have to worry about not having confidence playing with me. I'll always elevate you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why you always see guys step up when you don't think that those guys would step up in those situations. It always yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always happens, bro. So, so let me ask. So let me ask you this: who Who do you think? Who do you think wins it this year? Come on, man! Don't do that. Like, so do you think now? Do you think it's a breeze? Do you think uh... Lakers get to the finals? Like I said, my finals pick, and I'm I'm gonna stick with it. Lakers, Bucks, Lakers in four. Lakers, Bucks, yeah. But what's giving you so much confidence in, in in the Bucks? Call me crazy, Rich. I look at different things. I'm looking at this. Yo, Milwaukee struggled to start the season, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody was criticizing Milwaukee. Everybody was saying how 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 bad they look, and Giannis Giannis may have second guessed. He should have second guessed uh, signing that extension. Mm -hmm. But what are we seeing now? Philadelphia 76 is 32 and 15. Nets are 32 and 15. The Bucks are 29 and 17. The Bucks have been just as hot as Brooklyn in the last 10 games. They are coming. They finally, Drew Holiday finally understands how he's supposed to get off. Giannis now has a guy that he can be able to trust at that point guard position because for Giannis to excel, and to really excel in the playoffs. We're not talking about regular season numbers here. We're talking about playoffs. He needs a dominant point guard. He didn't have that with Eric Bledsoe. You got that with Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday's legit. No, he's like not. Drew, Drew Holiday's legit. And like I said, I just, with, Chris I Middleton, with Chris Middleton falling into that third role now, that's a, that's a problem for teams. But that's what I was going to ask you. That's what I was going to ask you. Do you think... Now, do you think it's a known thing that Chris Middleton is third fiddle? Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. You think so? Hell yeah. Bro, Drew Holiday ain't nobody's third wing. Unless unless you're playing with Braun and D-Wade. <laughs> unless, unless you're playing yeah. with Braun and D-Wade. Yeah, like, bro. I, I don't, yo, dude, I, I feel like come clutch time, come like those important moments. I don't see them going to Drew Holiday. I don't see them going to Drew Holiday just because Chris Middleton has first. First of all, they're paying Chris Middleton like a superstar. Yeah, he's gonna have that shot. He's gonna be the one still taking the last shot. I don't see it being Drew Holiday, bro. But here's the thing, though. I I'm telling you, bro. There's gonna come a time in the playoffs where Drew Holiday is going to take this team over. I'm telling you, like he right now, his numbers are 16 a game, four and a half rebounds, five assists. He's doing just enough to look like the third scorer. When it comes money time, that dude's money. It's yeah, money. Because I'm not going to lie. He changes that. I think he changes the playoff element. Completely, just, bro. Yeah, just because. That's what I'm Giannis talking about. Not able to produce, yeah, I'm not, I'm not talking about regular game. season. Yeah, yeah, I'm not talking about regular season, bro. They they don't need Drew Holiday to get to the playoffs. Yeah, They're yeah. going to need Drew Holiday in the play. In, 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 uh, uh, they don't need him to get to the playoffs. They're going to need him in the playoffs. Because Drew Holiday, I'm telling you, bro, he's a dog. And when you put him with PJ Tucker, bro, you don't, you don't, you don't want to see that type of situation in the playoffs where you got two guys that leave it all on the floor defensively. They don't back down. Yeah. So it now it now allows Giannis, who's always been, who uh, who probably has always felt like it's just him by himself. Now you got two dogs out there defensively where you can be able to kind of spread your wings a little bit and get your confidence. And now now we may see him elevate a little more in the playoffs because he's more comfortable. It's not just him anymore. Yeah. He got another dude that he can be able to rely on. Yeah. He got P.J. Brown to be able to take – I mean, uh, uh, P.J. Tucker –
to be able to take the the dirty work. He got that now. Tell okay. you, bro. So listen, because I gotta run. I, I definitely gotta run. Yeah, bro. Yo, listen, I appreciate listen, you. I, I got one more question for, for you before I go, though. Yes, sir. Give me your top four teams in the East that's going to be battling to get to the Eastern Conference champion championship, and who's your top four in the West? Damn, top four teams in the East. So I mean, obviously, we gotta put Brooklyn in there. Yeah, we gotta put Brooklyn in there. Uh, Sixers. Okay. Bucks. Um. But who's the fourth? Yo, <laughs> yo if you look at the standings, the Knicks. Knicks like the Knicks fifth. right now are fifth. Yeah, I think they're like they're like fifth place. But All right, I, I give you, I'll give you my my last team, Miami Heat. I could respect that. I don't, ex I don't expect it, but I could respect it. Shout out to my boy P. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think, uh, I think Miami makes a like four and six in their last ten, struggling a little bit. But remember, they started off bad, and then yeah, they got hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Miami, and, and with the moves that they made, they got uh, Bielitsa, they got Victor Oladipo, Miami. I'm telling you, Miami yeah, may now, end up now, doing the same it, thing they did it, last year. I was going to say, now, getting Oladipo. Now, the thing is, now, does that take away from Jimmy Butler, or do you think that adds to Jimmy Butler? Because – now nah, it, it it adds to Jimmy Butler because what it does is that Jimmy doesn't have to take the top dog anymore. Jimmy wants to take the top dog, but now you can be able to put a Victor Oladipo out there too. So you got two guys that can be able to play defense. It's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Now yeah. in regards to Victor Oladipo being, I I don't I don't consider him a winning player. He's not a winning player, but being around a guy like Jimmy Butler who does not expect. Like who expects nothing less than like maximum effort from his players? Yes. He's going to have to level up to play with a Jimmy Butler. Yeah, like he can't hot dog it. You know what I'm saying? So I expect the Miami Heat to be there in the West. Top four teams. I'm not even gonna count Utah. So we gonna we 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 gonna throw them out of there. <laughs> I got I got I got uh, Phoenix Phoenix legit Lakers Clippers um, and Nuggets. If you want to put, if you want to throw Portland, Portland, Portland is is there too. They're kind of like right on the outside. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But those are my top four teams, bro: Clippers, Lakers, Suns, Nuggets. Like those teams, so, any one of those so, teams. So the, so the Suns, so the Suns for you make it. Oh no, the Suns are legit, bro. They're you don't legit. like that? You don't like Dallas? No, no. I don't. I don't like Dallas for a couple of reasons. I love Luca. I think Luca's probably one of the best young players I've ever seen. Yeah. The problem that I have with Luca is that he shoots too many threes. He shoots Dallas out of games more than he puts them in it. No, that's true. And the thing is, with Porzingis, his health bothers me. If he if he's gonna be your second guy, you got concerns. Yeah. If yeah. Porzingis is your third guy, you money. So if they can be able to find another dude, if they can be able to to bring in like a Bradley Beal. That's something. But for right yeah. now, if, if, if Porzingis like, I, I is their number two guy, you're not going to win. Don't you, he, he requires the ball too long, man. So he's too ball dominant, yeah, bro. He's too I, I ball dominant. That's why I don't see a guy like Bradley Beal doing well with Luka. Just because well, well, Bradley Beal will make Luka like, like, kind of like stationary. Well, the thing is this. This is the thing where I, I disagree with that because Luka has – high basketball IQ. And I think if Lucas sees a guy like Bradley Beal who can be able to go get a bucket, he will dial his game back. So he'll dial back the aggressiveness in regards to the long threes, the step back threes. He'll be more of a penetrator and a kicker because yeah. he knows that he has a guy that can be able to get 30 points a game. Yeah. So his IQ is what I respect. But for right now, they just don't have enough. So I'm not even going to count them. Fan fan podcast just put Dallas Dallas not doing nothing. Yeah, I don't expect yeah. Dallas to do well. I don't expect them to go far into the playoffs. Nah, but they'll they'll feel, they'll, they'll be a fight though. Yeah, that's what I, but I feel yeah. like Dallas. I feel like Dallas could take a team like the Suns out. Oh, 100 percent. It'll be a fight. Like if if the playoffs were to start today, you would have Phoenix against Dallas, and yeah. that's not going to be a four game series. That that may go six or seven. Yeah, 100. percent I feel like I feel like Dallas can. Just because I feel like um, CP can't guard 
Luca. Yeah. So they're gonna have to put like Mikel Bridges on him. Right. Now, if you put Mikel Bridges on him, that takes away from all his three point shooting. Yeah. Because the amount of energy he's gonna need to have to guard Luca for the entire game, offensively right. he won't be able to produce. And his main job is to drill threes. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So and right. so that's why I feel like if because you, if you're saying Suns is the top team, I feel like Dallas is better. I okay. Mean, let me not say let me not say better, but I feel like Dallas is like stiff competition. For they're com them. they're comparable. Yeah, they're, they're, comparable. they're definitely stiff competition for. Them. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I don't care what anybody said. The West is a shootout. It's the it's up, yo, it's up for grabs. Shootout. It's up for grabs. Because clip clip showed they're done. I think I think it's going to end up being Lakers and the Nuggets in the in the. I can the see that. I can definitely see that. And I and I, I, and, I and I think Lakers going to run right through them. Yeah, they beat five. I think I think yeah, they, I think they're gonna run right through them because I still feel like a lot of dudes still fear Braun. Bro, of course they do. They like, know what he's like. Like playoff Braun is something different, man. Yeah. Like that that you don't want to deal with that. And you Matthew put a Hill. and, and then got, you put and we got Wes Matthews, Caldwell Pope, Kuz. I don't yo yo Kuz. Kuz don't talk like about don't 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 you mention Kuz to me ever. Don't, yo, don't you mention be, yo, there yeah. be days where he'd be like, yo, that's what I'm talking about. But then there'll be other days like, yo, I right, he put on the wrong journey. Who is that? Like, you know what I mean? Like you, you don't even know. But I don't know. Late show, I'm still I'm still there, man. We we in there. I, I you know me, I've never been a dude to buy jerseys and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> But if they win another championship, man, I think I might do it, man. You, are, you well, don't don't worry, man. We'll go to the store together. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might have to do it, man. I might have to do it. <laughs> Dude, yo, B, I gotta get out of here, bro. Yo, my dude, man, I appreciate yeah. you. All right, my dude, love you, boy. Take it easy. Yes, sir. All right, man. That's my man, man. That, that was he. Yo, he's right on everything. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely right on everything because at the end of the day. I think the West is up for grabs a bit if the Lakers are not healthy. But if they're healthy, it's a wash. Like you, you're not going to be able to deal with Drummond, AD, Kuzma, Braun, THT, Harold, Schroeder. I didn't even mention his little ass. Like, they're a problem. So, you know. That's that that's it for all even live, man. I'm signing out until next week.